Hey, what's going on everybody? So in this video, we're gonna talk about the interview process for Django developers and questions that you might expect and we'll go over some answers and why they're being asked here. So the list of questions that I have here is actually a compiled list of real interview questions from when I was applying. So there was a period in time when I was applying for a Django position. So this, these are questions that were asked of me and also questions that I used to ask candidates when I was doing the hiring. So about Three years ago, I was in charge of hiring developers at my company, so I had to put together this list and I put it together very strategically to understand a candidate and try to evaluate them. So it helped me learn a lot about a candidate. So I want to give you the perspective of what I'm thinking here, why I'm asking them, and then by knowing why I'm asking them and what I want to see, maybe it can help you or it should help you in your process and maybe give better answers here. So uh, the thing about these interviews is uh, not every interview is going to be the same. That's going to completely change on the person interviewing you, the job, the position, the company. So I'm going to try to cover as much as possible here, but do understand that you might have an interview that's way simpler than this. And a lot of them probably will be simpler as far as the questions and some may be harder depending on the position. So I just want to try to cover as much as possible and the, the fake position that we're creating here. So the imaginary position is for a junior level Django developer. So the expectation here is that somebody that takes this interview is gonna be able to understand Django. We want somebody that knows Django, that can study the company or get familiar with the company system and then somebody that can be effective pretty early on. So the expectation here is that you know Django but you're gonna be in a junior position. You're not gonna be some kind of lead here. We just wanna plug you in. So that's what I'm looking for. And with that being said, let's start with the process of the assessment test and the portfolio or uh, the resume here. So there are companies that do assessment tests. I've never done this, and this is before that interview process. And this is where companies filter out candidates before they bring you into this interview process. So just to get that interview, uh, obviously the assessment test, if you're doing that, you want to know a lot of the answers here. Um, but I used to do just a portfolio and the resume. So once I filtered out, let's say out of 200 candidates, I would bring in 40, maybe 30 for an interview. Then that interview process started. So the first thing I would say about the interview process is I would advise you to try to control the interview in a good way. And if I brought you in, it means that something about your resume stood out, something about your portfolio. So try to focus on that because my first step here is not to have a Q&A session. I want to build rapport. I want to build a relationship and try to understand the person that I'm interviewing. So if I'm asking you about a project, and that's usually what they'll ask you about, former projects, uh, what are you currently working on, your past jobs, try to give more answers than just um, yes or no questions or these one-liners. Try to expand upon it and try to go into detail because if you go into detail, you can tell me a lot about what you know just from that process. I can start to understand, and in this case, instead of going through my list of 50 questions, I'm able to know that, okay, if you've built this these many projects and clearly you understand based off of what you built how to set up a Django project, I don't need to ask you that question. So you're eliminating questions by giving good answers just on that on those portfolio projects and so on. So what I'm doing here is I'm judging you based on the portfolio projects and or your resume and a combined result of all your answers to the questions. So I'm not trying to I'm not trying to stumble you. I'm not trying to trick you. Most interviewers will not try to do this. They just want to make an overall assessment. So don't worry so much about getting a question wrong. If you're answering it and you don't know it, you can even say, um, if you've done it a bunch of times, say, wow, I've done this a bunch of times. I'm just blanking out. I don't remember what the exact command was, but I think it's something like this. Try to elaborate on those questions. That's going to help me understand that, hey, you just didn't remember the exact code and that's okay. That's understandable. So that's just some pretext to that. And the portfolio and how you're responding, that's the first, uh, the first questions here. So... Let's go ahead and uh, start with the actual questions here. So the first thing I'm going to do in this process is uh, I'm not going to go straight for Django. I'm usually going to go for the prerequisites. So right away, I'm probably going to start with Python. So I want to know your Python skills. Usually I'll just ask you uh, how familiar are you with it? What have you done with Python? Maybe some basic questions, but I would probably ask you what courses have you taken? What books? Where did you learn it? Just to try to gauge that. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but obviously if you're a Django developer, you'll need to know that. So after that, um, I'll probably go into HTML and CSS. So this is going to be the second question. What's your knowledge of this? At this point, I just want to know that you have a basic understanding unless the position requires you to build out and design templates. 
Um, I'm usually just making sure that you have that part covered. You can work with HTML and CSS, preferably some front end frameworks or some CSS frameworks like Bootstrap uh, and so on. So I just want to get you familiar there. Check that off the list and JavaScript. Now, if you didn't know JavaScript for this position, I guess this imaginary position, I wouldn't dock you for it, but it would be a nice plus. So as a web developer, there's a good chance you're probably going to need to know JavaScript at some point. So if you know it, great. If you don't, it's not going to necessarily hurt you. But if there's a candidate that knows that and is maybe more advanced, then um, I would probably prefer that candidate based on other measures. So JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and, um, and Python here. So remember, JavaScript is not something that I'm going to judge you hard on. It's just going to be something that I want to know if you understand it because that's a nice plus. So as far as Django, the first questions here, let's go ahead and go into that. Uh, typically, I would go ahead and ask you what is Django. So depending on how that portfolio interview process went, uh, if I didn't fully understand that you know it very well, I would ask you what is Django. And I'd like to see a typical response here. And a good response would just let me know that Django is a backend Python based web framework. Um, if you can compare it to if you can ma maybe reference a Flask framework or mention uh, frameworks from other libraries, say it's kind of like Express and Node.js or PHP and Laravel. Uh, I like this because I'm understanding that you know what frameworks are. If you mentioned a couple of front end frameworks, it's not a must to mention those, but it's going to help me understand, OK, he knows what frameworks are or he or she knows what frameworks are and uh, we don't have to go too far there. So uh, another question I typically like to ask, what is or which is a uh, what what can you build in Django? So I want to know that you understand what Django is used for. Uh, and the response that I would usually go for is uh, typically people would say something like a social network, an e-commerce platform. But a good response that would help me understand is if you reference companies that used it. So it helps to know this. So in this case, if you mentioned um, really its capabilities are anything, but companies like Udemy use it, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, Dropbox uses it, I believe YouTube uses it, then I'm understanding, okay, you know Django and you understand that it's capable of a lot. You're you're understanding what it's done or what it can do. And if you mention maybe APIs, that it's good for building out APIs, that's a good response. I would really like to hear that. So I would definitely, uh, yeah, I would, I would understand that you know what Django is. Uh, if you didn't know what you can build with it or what Django was or front end or back end frameworks are, I would be a little bit concerned there. So I would want to make sure you understand that. So then I go into a section of basic concepts and commands. So this is where I'm just like rapid fire, just trying to make sure that you you've worked with it before that you didn't just hear about it. Uh, usually I'm judging pretty lightly here because if you don't remember exact code, that's going to be fine. Um, I understand that you can just Google things up, but as long as you know most of them and uh, you're able to to give me. Yeah, just to try to give me explain what's going on here. I would I would. Uh, I'd be pretty forgiven here. So the first thing I'll probably ask is what's the difference between a project and an app here? So a good answer is the project is like an overall environment. It's your basic website in a sense. And an app is like a component of that website. An app is really where you hold the project logic and the project itself can be composed of many apps here. So really the project is a, the, the configuration and apps are components of that website. And if you gave me an example, uh, one example I like to use is Facebook.com. So that's like your project and different apps would be like the news feed, maybe groups. So different components of it. If you can structure that out for me, try to give me some analogies here. Uh, I would understand that, you know, the difference between projects and apps. Now, if you don't, uh, I wouldn't judge you too hard there because the, the actual answer might be difficult to explain. But if, as long as I can see that you can see that there's a difference and maybe what it's used for. I wouldn't, I would be able to accept that answer here. So uh, commands here. So the next one, so after what's the difference between a project and app, we'll probably go into basic commands like how do you start a project? The answer would just be to use Django dash admin, start project, and then the project name. Uh, how do you start an app? That would be another one that's python manage.py start app. So the start app command there, and then the app name, how do you run a development server? So I'm just going through the basics here. And the answer to that one would be Python manage.py run server. So you're starting your development server uh, from your project directory here. So another question here is going to be, give me your best explanation. So I always like to have this question on there. 
um, give me your best explanation of the settings.py file. So even if I understood that you knew it, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on it. And at this point, I'm just judging your maybe technical understanding of Django. And an answer that would be acceptable would probably be something like settings.py is your project configuration. And I would ask you what you use it for. The answer for that would be like your database connections, uh, configuring your apps and the overall command center to the project. So if I can get an answer like that, that's acceptable here. So after that, I'll probably go into the, the MVT structure. So there's the MVC MVT structure. Now, I don't like to just ask what is the MVT and explain that to me because that gets into the part where you're just asking very technical jargon. And I remember in my first two years, I wouldn't be able to give you a good explanation of it, even though I understood what it was. So the way I asked it was, what are models, what are views and what are templates and how do they function? Now, an acceptable answer for this would be something like if, if it's models, I would say uh, models are a class-based representation of database tables. So they represent our database structures and the view is basically the business logic and what returns back, what gets triggered and returns back uh, templates, responses, and so on. So I can accept that. I can see your understanding what a view is there. Now, the template layer, this is just returning HTML templates. So I can take that answer. I would A response, I guess, would be something like uh, this is where we store templates and views are typically returned using or views typically return templates. So something like that, I'm not looking for anything too technical. I can see that. So that's just the MVT structure. So then I would ask you, what are URL patterns? So I just want to know that you understand how to configure URLs here, pretty basic level stuff. So uh, if you just let me know, these are URL paths to configure maybe the website's routing. So per URL, what's being triggered, it's kind of like your freeway of, of or your exits and so on on a freeway. So it's like connecting URLs to views and it's a navigation to the website. So something like that, if you can give me a generic response there, as long as I can see that, I would accept that. And I also want to know about the Django admin panel. So what is it? Um, a response, if you just let me know that this is something like uh, a quick setup that Django provides, kind of like a graphical user interface to see your data, to connect with it. It comes built in with Django. I can accept that. I just want to know that you understand what that is because it is a key feature, even though I personally don't use it too much. It is a key feature of Django and something that any beginner should know. So make migrations and the migrate command. So I always ask this, I would just say, tell me what make migrations and migrate is. And I'm not looking for the details of each one, but uh, if I'm asking you what make migrations is, a response like uh, this configures and basically creates the basic migrations and preps your database for changes. Um, even though that's not the official technical response, I can see that you get what's happening here. And then migrate, I would just say, let me know that this is what actually enforces those changes and it applies changes to our database. So I can take that, that response there too. So the next question is, do you have a preference when it comes to class-based views or function-based views? Why or why not? So the reason why I'm asking this is because there's some misunderstandings here. There's people that think, class-based views need to be used. Some people think they don't need to be used at all. And I just wanna know that you know what class-based views are. That's really what I care about. I would like you to understand how to work with them, but I really don't care what your preference is. I'm just trying to pull information out of what you think uh, what you think about them. And, and if you know what class-based views are, I guess, that's probably the best way to sum it up. I'm trying to get an understanding of what you know. I really don't care what you use unless our company uses a certain structure. But if you know what they are, we can teach you that. That's not an issue. So I wouldn't put too much weight there. So what database systems do you prefer to use with Django? So all I want to hear is something like Postgres, MySQL, Oracle. Heck, if you want to use uh, MongoDB, I don't care. Uh, my, my biggest thing is that you know that there are these database systems and you're not just using the default SQL. So or the SQLite database. So I just want to know that you know something beyond that because uh, we're not going to use SQLite in real websites here at any company. So I just want to know that you understand how to work with that. And the follow-up question to that is typically, how do we set up a database connection? So the answer to this and what I'm looking for is that you understand um, how you can actually connect a database. And the answer to this would be something like in settings.py, there's a database variable uh, it's actually a dictionary, and this is where we can update, modify our database connections, like if we're connecting to Postgres. Just let me know where it's at, and I'll understand that you at least understand the process and that you know how to go through that. So 
that's kind of like the the basic commands in a or the basic concepts and commands. So this is where I'm just rapid fire making sure you know the basics here. And the next part is I want to go into URLs here. So this one is pretty short. This section. Uh, what I usually do is I just ask you what what are the dynamic ways we can access URLs here. So and, and why do we name URLs? So the formal question is why do we name URLs and what are dynamic ways of accessing them in our views and our templates? So I just want to make sure that you're not hard coding URLs and that we're using that name value if it's there. We might as well use it. Um, you don't necessarily have to use it in projects, but I want to make sure that you understand it because it is a valuable part of Django. So if you don't understand what that is, I'll make sure to put up a screenshot here and then circle that part there. So um, after that, I would want to make sure you know how to use it. So I'd ask you to give me an example. So the answer here would be to where if you're adding in a link in a template, you're not just using the href tag, you're not just adding in forward slash and then like login. Um, we're adding in the curly braces. I believe those are just code blocks or tags. I forgot what they're called myself. Um, and you're just adding in the URL name. And the reason why we want to do that, if you can give me a good example to why we're using that, that is a big plus. And the reason why we use the URL name is because uh, it makes it more dynamic. This way we're not having to hard code the path. And it's really good for if we happen to change the URL path. So if we change something up, but the name stays the same, then that dynamic value changes and it keeps our code clean from having to uh, go through and update everything. So after URLs, I typically like to go to templates here. So we'll go here. And at this point, I want to know what you know about template tags. If you understand template inheriting, including, and the first question in this section is usually where do you store your templates? So the two answers I could accept here is there's different ways to, to store templates, but I would say either in the default app structure. So Django apps typically tell you to store in a folder called templates in a subfolder called whatever your app name is, and then you can put all the templates there. Or if we want to completely manually assign this value, we can go into settings.py and there is a templates variable. So uh, in there, there's a variable and then there's a list called directories. All you have to do is let your project know where the templates are. And then in theory, you can store them. You can store them anywhere. You just have to set the file path to that folder and let Django know where to find them. So next I want to go into template tags and understanding the templating language here. So if you mention Jinja to me uh, right away, I'm going to understand that you probably have a good understanding of what, what this is. If you know Jinja, you probably understand the structure here. So um, I would ask you, what do the double curly braces mean? And I would show you probably an example of that. So in interview questions, I would just say that and explain it. And an answer would be something like, this is just a placeholder for variables. This is how we can output dynamic data. I can take that. So now I know you know how to pass in data and then set variables in the template. And then I would also ask you, what do the curly braces mean with the percent signs? So those tags that we see, uh, those a good response would be that those are just code blocks. This is where we can write Pythonic like logic in our templates. And um, I'll probably ask you to give me some examples. How would you write a for loop, an if statement in any kind of uh, conditions in our templates? If you understand that, I get that you know how to work with the templating. So after that, I'll probably ask you how to include and inherit. So a good answer for including a section of another HTML template would just be to use the include tag. So I'll take that as an answer. And how do we inherit and extend a template? So I'll typically want an explanation here. The further you can go into that, the better. Uh, I would want to hear something like uh, we add in a blog tag into or a blog, yeah, blog tag into the parent template. So let's say we have a template called main.html and then we can just use the includes tag or extends tag in the template where we want to extend it and then add in block tags and that would just extend the template. So maybe we can elaborate there, but an answer like that helps me understand that you know it. And that's it for the templating section. So after that, and you can see I'm going through like the basics of Django here. So we started at the basics, we went to URLs, templates, and then uh, the next section is static files here. So what are static files and how do they typically get included or what what is in uh, what are what's in static files typically? So an answer would just be just let me know that this is where we store files like HTML files, CSS files, JavaScript files, not HTML files, but CSS, JavaScript, uh, images, any kind of just static files, I guess. And we typically store them in their own folder. Uh, a response like that, I would accept there. So 
how do we configure our static files in development? So at this point, you know what static files are, how do you configure them? This is more of a technical one. I'm not gonna dock you too much for maybe missing the variable name, but I would like to know that it's in settings.py. So the answer is that you would go into settings.py and you would set the static files directories variable. And then that's just gonna be a list pointing to wherever we wanna include our static files. So it's kind of like the templates where we're letting Django know where we're storing them. now. I would like to ask what media root is. So this is something that I ask a lot and a good answer here. Just let me know that that is where we upload user generated content and we'll go into collect static. So at this point, if you stumble here a little bit as a beginner, I'm gonna be more forgiving, but I would like to know that you can pick up on this quick, but I would say what is collect static? And the answer is this takes all of our static files from what we set in static root. In a sense, it bundles them, duplicates them, and it preps our files for production and how we deliver them. But it, in a sense, controls how we how we output our files and where we place them. See, I'm actually stumbling in this question, and this is where, when I'm interviewing somebody, I understand that they may not have the best answer on spot. We're not we're not dictionaries here, so that's actually a good example there. So, collect static files. Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, I think that was the only question that I had for that. So, static files are not meant to be, Django doesn't serve static files in production. It's typically not designed for that. So I would ask you, how do we serve static files in production? And there's a, a whole list of questions and all I want, or a whole list of answers that you can give here. All I'm looking here, or I'm, all I'm looking for here is that you understand at least a few of those options and you understand that uh, there is differences between storing static files locally or in, in our testing environment or when we're going to production. So if you tell me something like, one option is AWS S3. Another one is to use third-party packages like Django White Noise. If you mentioned a few others, that would be good enough for me. I'm not looking for anything too advanced here, just to know that you know the difference and then maybe a few of those options. Anything else we can teach you at the company what our methods are of doing that. So after that, we'll go into the models file. So I wanna make sure you know about this and I don't wanna ask you every question about models. But what I would do is I would just set you up with some basic questions and just see what you can answer here. So typically what I like to do is just ask people what is a foreign key. So this is the model attributes here. So let me know what that is. The answer for that would be, this just sets a one to many relationship between one model and another. Uh, I'll go into a one to one field. That should be easy for any beginner. It's kind of self-explanatory, but that just sets a one to one relationship. If you don't know what relationships are, uh, that's something that I would definitely expect you to already know. Now there's the many to many field. So the the answer to that would just be that there, uh, this sets a many to many relationship. I might ask you what are many to many relationships, try to go into that. And then just kind of the one that I would throw in there randomly would be what is uh, the character field attribute. So that's an easy one. If you let me know that's just a string value, maybe an alternative is a text field. Uh, I, I'll pretty much leave you alone for the models. It seems like if you answer those, you understand what's going on here. So after models, I would move on to database queries here. So at this point, I just wanna know that you can make basic queries to the database. You can get uh, multiple items, get a single item and filter them. So questions would be like, uh, how would you query all the items in a database table? The answer would just be model name, dot objects, dot all. How do, we, how do we query one item from a database table? The answer to that would be, model name dot objects dot get and then query it by an attribute. How do we filter items? How do we filter multiple items or how do we fil filter items by multiple attributes? So let's say you're trying to filter a user by first name and last name. So I would like to throw that in there, see if you understand that. And one that beginners get uh, confused on here is what does model dot model model name underscore I'm actually having a hard time wording this, but basically when you see underscore set and then dot all or dot filter, I'm trying to figure out if you know how to query child model objects here. So I would throw that in and I would like to see if you know how to do that. And also if you know how to query upwards. So can you give me, let's say if we have an article and a user, how would you get a user out of an article model? So in this case, something like uh, go to go ahead and get that article and then just do article dot user. So can you query backwards? Can you go up that chain and get parent elements? So basic queries to the database, understanding how to work with that, get elements, uh, 
that would be enough for me for a beginner level position. So at the end of it, I usually close it with some more generic questions. This is kind of like that opening where I'm just rapid fire asking questions not so structured uh, for a certain category. Um, usually I'll just go through here and I'll ask what are CSRF tokens. Uh, any answer like this helps against cross-site forgery, uh, forgery attacks um, and maybe when to use them like on post, put request, delete request here and that we typically send these with our form. So we're just protecting our data here and uh, any explanation like that and just how to use them would be enough for me. Uh, I like to use model forms, so I always want to make sure that even if you're not using them, you understand what model forms are. The answer to that would just be that this is a class-based representation. So it's like a form that makes a, it's basically a form that gets generated based off of a model. So let's say if we have a customer model, we create a class inheriting from um, forms, from the form um, object, I believe that's how to say it. And what happens is when we use that form, it just auto generates the fields, all the fields or the specified fields. So if you let me know that, I see that you know what's going on here and we will just go over that one pretty quick. So what is a Django REST framework and why do we need it? So most projects are gonna require you to go beyond just understanding the basics of Django, but also understand DRF because a lot of applications either use front end frameworks or need some kind of API. So this isn't gonna be something that I'm gonna hold against you, but I would like you to know it. Um, it wouldn't be good not to know at least what it is, but the answers would be, answers I would take is this is what we used to build out APIs here and maybe mentioning some kind of like process in a front end framework. Like this can be used, be or this is typically used because we might wanna use React, Vue, Angular for a front end framework or just more JavaScript and it helps to build out that API. So that kind of answer I would accept. Now, I do like to know that you know about signals. That's also a good one. So I'd like to get an example of that. Uh, I'll answer for you right now. So signals are a way of knowing what's going, it's a way of letting us know of what's going on in a different part of our application. So an example I'd like to see from you is letting me know that it's something like, um, if a, a user model is saved, basically we send out a signal, sends, out a, sends it to a receiver and it lets us know that the user model was saved and now we can perform another action. So something along those lines, I would go back and forth and discuss this with you, ask for some more examples, but that's a that's a good answer there. I would accept that. So the question, the last question here, this is the, this is the last one. Actually, no, it's not the last one on my list. So we have another one here, and this is how do we get an unauthenticated user from viewing certain pages? So how do we set some user restrictions? So there's a few options here for the answer. Uh, a few I would accept because this is done in many different ways. You can use middleware for this. We can use decorators. We can custom build our own decorators. If we're using class-based views, we can use mixins for this. And we're not mixins, but we can just set the permissions classes. If you give me something like that, uh, maybe setting it by user roles or user attributes, um, that would be good enough for me. I would just want to know that you understand that process. And the last question that I formally have here on this list is what are serializers and model serializers? So the answer I would take here is that serializers are basically, or serializing data is a way of taking our Python data and turning it into something like JSON data, XML, there's different formats here. So a model serializer is something that we can use kind of like a model form where we create a class based on around, based around a model and then the data in that model gets turned into JSON format. So that's it for my formal questions. Um, I typically like to go into more of an open discussion. I would have my list of questions that I'll go out and, and use here. Um, these are questions that I got a lot. Usually I was asked to do more, uh, let's say just project based stuff. So in my, in my case, I was asked a lot of these questions and I was asked questions about things like authentication, uh, maybe login users in just talking about how demo applications are built. So this is what my experience has been. But what I noticed is, like I mentioned earlier, when I give a good answer to my projects and I can build good rapport with whoever's interviewing me, the conversation completely shifted because if somebody knows the application that I built out, for example, in my case, I built out real a real application for, for, a, for a laboratory. I built out a pretty big system using React and uh, Django on the back end, React on the front end there was no need for them to ask me a lot of these questions. You don't wanna ask me about static files if you see that I've clearly built out big applications. It's obvious that I know it. And that's what I mean by uh, having a good conversation there and having good projects. Now, if you don't have them, it helps to, to understand this stuff. So 
I hope that gives you some form of idea. I try to do this a little bit more informally. I know that maybe my answers weren't the best here and how I'm explaining things, but I want to give you an idea of what to expect and what I want to see out of the answers as far as yeah, what to expect in response here and what I'm looking for. So I'm trying to gauge a basic understanding. If you know how to do this, I can add you to our team most likely and have you, you know, build out components of our site or work on smaller features, but as long as you understand the core functionality. So that's it for this video. I uh, hope to hope to or I hope it was helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.